Hello, welcome to Quok Talk. I'm Crystal here in Think Tech. This Tuesday, we're going to talk about some Chinese issues. Now, there's a real stereotype out there, or cliche maybe even, that a lot of Chinese moms are tiger moms. Now, what does it mean to be a tiger mom? This phrase was kind of coined, you know, not too long ago, uh, based on a famous book that kind of re. Uh, emphasize the fact that a lot of Asian moms, particularly Chinese, maybe Korean and Japanese, are very, very strict and controlling about their kids. Well, in fact, there are some that aren't so controlling and some who don't or want to defy certain types of control because there's some elder, other elements uh, in, and importance in how to raise children. So I've got some two very interesting women, two different moms here, single moms in fact, who have a different attitude on raising kids. So let's welcome them and let's talk about this a little bit, about how not all Chinese women are tiger moms. Welcome non-tiger moms. Are you both professed non-tiger moms? Let's put it out there first. Definitely not tiger mom at okay. all. Okay, <laughs> not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. <laughs> you? Yes, no. You seem very calm and peaceful, so I don't think you're tiger mom either. Let's welcome them. So, Kathleen Lin. Kathleen Lin is the president of Nihao Media. Yes. And uh, you have a daughter who is how old? She's 14, okay. going on 25. Yes, I know you. Yeah, I hear you there. <laughs> and Kun Kun? Yes. Kun, your Chinese, your full name is Bao Kun Duan. Yes. 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 And you have a very interesting background uh, with a foundation that has to do with uh, preserving art. Yes. And culture. Uh, we founded uh, the Academy of Himalayan uh, Art. And actually, the foundation serves a few purposes. One is preserve the dying out Himalayan culture. And second is to develop um, the culture mature into children's curriculum. Specifically into their schooling? Uh, into or more, outside? I think, into their family education side. Ah. Which I think, I personally think, is more important sometimes sure. even than the school curriculum. Absolutely. Well, let's talk a little bit about the, okay, so putting school aside, we as parents, um, particularly women maybe, right. let's talk about your background. So we'll kind of gather how that influenced your perspective as a parent. Sure. Um, you grew up. Uh, in where? Let's give a little bit of a so, nutshell. So um, I was born to a Chinese father, mainland Chinese father, and a Taiwanese mother. Was your mom a tiger mom? My mom was not a tiger mom, and I think for the most part, you know how people say we raise our ch our children according to yes. how we were raised, or we rebel a hundred percent. Exactly. <laughs> so in my case, I am raising my child exactly how my mom raised ah. me. My mom was a very very career oriented person. Okay. Right. So on one hand, she's a very strong woman. Okay. But on the other hand, she also believed in letting myself and my brother develop our own personality. So now looking back, and this is very rare. I yes. grew up in Asia until I was 17. In Taiwan? In Taipei. Okay. Yes. My mother actually had never, ever pushed me or my brother to get straight A's. Ever. But that's very rare. That's very rare. Because people, rare. parents who yeah. know Asian uh, right. academics, it's right. like everything is study, study, study. You don't have right. time for extracurricular activities. Right. Okay, so you're very fortunate. I'm very, very blessed. So, yes. therefore, my daughter Christiane, she was born and raised in the U.S. Actually, in Honolulu, Hawaii, yes. she's a local girl. Yes. So, when she was born, I knew exactly how I was going to raise her. Really? Yeah. And, I mean, up until now, she's 14 and a half. I never had to t push her or tell her to go to her homework. She's a very self-disciplined type of young lady. So, so do you think your concept is if you allow them the freedom to explore, they will find their way to grasp it? You know, the way I look at it is boundaries are important. Yeah. However, I don't want to give her so much rules and regulations yes. to suffocate. Okay. You know, to I want her to be able to grow up and let her personality be shine yes. through. Totally agree. Yeah. And yeah. the whole reason why I stay in Hawaii for sixteen years, I can say my primary reason is for my daughter. Ah. Is for her to grow up in a place where in my opinion I think this is one of the best places to raise children okay. in the world. Wow. Okay, you know? so it sounds like you're very clear on your parenting concept and knowing how to give her that. Yes. Gun Gun, you grew up in a very different environment. Yes. Let's hear how you, and you have a daughter who is quite young. Yes, yes. So I actually was born in, uh, in Kunming and uh, in the military family. Oh, wow. So I grew up on a military air force base. Huh. Oh, and which, that was the defense line between China and Vietnam. So I grew up watching um, 
the fighters took off. Wow. <laughs> Were there women in the military? <clears throat> yes, yes. But uh, most of the women there are uh, uh, like doing uh, the administration and supporting. But so my father was, he was not the pilot, but he was controlling the back station, I think. Okay. And so, you know, how military uh, concept during yes. the 1970s. So oh gosh, in I, China? All my <gasps> pictures taken childhood was has the four leaders' big pictures behind me. <laughs> I'm standing, <laughs> standing on the stairway. Yeah. It was the old, uh, you know, those drive-in stairs to the plane. Oh, wow. I used to fly when, when I was very young. Uh, from coming to Beijing, uh -huh. I would get on the plane to deliver goods to the Chinese leaders, I think. Wow. Yeah, so I, I start fly really young, but because of a certain concept of education in their mind, and they're very disciplined people, so I would say my mom was a tiger mom. Okay. Because I was never perfect in her eyes. Ah. And she, she's a big dreamer in her life, but she's went through the times of China that she never really had the opportunity to, to learn right. and to, to bring out whatever her exactly. dreams in, in life. Basically what Catherine is providing for her daughter, you were not allowed to have and she never had Yeah, that. I give you an example. I really love music. So when I saw piano first time in TV, I said, I want to play piano. So my mom took me to a piano teacher, and they said my little fingers too too short. I would never be a good piano player. Mm -hmm. You know, let's just cue your dream yeah, like, yeah, right there. Right. And plus, my mom sending there say, you know, being an artist, you will not yeah. never make your life. Yes. <laughs> then my dad would say, why don't you be a doctor? <laughs> of <You know>? course. <laughs> and so their generation is the ones. You really should go for academic yes, and right. go for the A's yes. and study hard, go to Tsinghua, Beijing University. Yes. That's, yes. that's what they're looking and for. And then marry into a nice, rich, good family background, right? Yeah, no? and, but you know how life, my life is very dramatic. And I'm the only child. I'm the typical result of the family planning. Right. And my parents were so loyal to the party. But unfortunately, they both passed away very young age. So my mom died 52, my father died 45. Let me clarify for people who don't realize that the family planning in Hong, uh, China until recently was a one-child system. And so you think about it, that depleted all your, you had no cousins, no yeah. siblings, yeah. no one to grow yeah, up I with. I grew up very lonely. And, and then, so I was a rebelling kid. I was very strong against my mom's policy. Do you think this is a personality thing? Do you think that's something that as much as a parent wants to control their child, it comes from you, yourself, that you, do you think, both of you? To I, rebel? No, I, I it's think your personality. So. Oh. Yeah. I, I think parents influence the kids. If we have fear in our life, and if we have negative energy, yeah. we try to pass down. We mm -hmm. c unconsciously yes. pass this energy to our children, and we seem uh, worry to lose them or yeah, lose right. control of something, mm -hmm. and then you automatically, without knowing it, unconsciously, you're, you're controlling your kids. Oh, I that's agree. really interesting. Yeah. I think from my point of view, is it's 50-50. I do believe parenting plays a big role in influencing children, but I do believe every one of us yeah. were born with our, our own personalities, too. But it needs time to... It does. Develop. And it needs the, the space, freedom. Yes. the freedom to yes. develop. Yes. And for me, I can say that because I went through this period of time that I knew from a very young age. Yeah. I was 11. I knew when I was 11 that I was going to come to the U.S. Okay. and study in the U.S. Yeah. And so you didn't I, have a rebellious period where you wanted to defy your parents? I think my rebellious period was when I so wanted to come to the U.S. to leave the Asian society. Why did you want to leave the Asian society? I never felt like I fit in. <laughs> <laughs> was it because of the controlling element that we're talking about here? I think an Asian society is, generally speaking, a much more conservative right. society. I'm a very free spirit, spirited type of person. Are you saying person. that there are no free spirits in they Asia? There are, but much, it, it's more, a lot more limited. Yeah. Yeah, and even now when I go back to Asia, I think I can really feel that. I mean, yeah, Asia yeah. has come it's a, a controlling long way. society, right? And sometimes it's not necessarily the controlling, it's just the atmosphere. Well, and look at the it's education, right? Opinion. Look at yeah. the education. You have so mm -hmm. much that you have to do that you are not, you don't have the space to explore right. your interests. Traveling. 
you know, let's okay, do yeah, traveling, sure. for example, okay. to me. The moment, since the moment that my daughter was born, yeah. it has been such a big element in yeah. our life because I'm a firm believer that we learn while we travel. Absolutely. Right? But not everyone has the ability to do that. And not, oh, not only that, I think in Asia, if my daughter were growing up in Asia, it would be a much different story oh, because sure. school would never allow her to be out of school one or two weeks every right. month. Right. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think in American society, we have a little bit more flexibility. And that's why both of you are very non-conventional in the ways. I mean, Kung Kun, you mentioned briefly last time that you had um, stayed a year in Bhutan. Yeah. Was this with your daughter? Yeah. I mean, she was quite no, very young. Not quite a, uh, the one time uh, stayed a year. So back to the story. Then, yeah. Um, I start my last 10 years ago, I start preserving the dying out Himalayan culture. Right. And then... I discovered that I, I, I asked my quest, myself a question, why we humans even preserve culture? Hmm. And then I realized through learning from the old artists, the grandma, grandpa, about 100 years old in the Himalayan villages, yeah. they're full of life, yeah, their stories. eyes are pure like lake. And they taught me something because all our value, our human wisdom is hidden in the heritage, in the culture. And so there's only a purpose, one purpose to pass it on is for your younger generation. That's true. And then since then, I start to really look at the whole education concept. What is education? Yes. Education is a Latino word. It means bring out, not pounding in. Which is what a lot of Asian cultures do. Right. Yes. It's all that. Yeah. And mm -hmm. actually, our Asian ancestors in Asia did not teach kids just pound in. If you study about the I Ching and the Feng Shui yeah, and yeah. Lao Tzu and Confucius, and they let you learn the rules of universe and rules of nature first. And then we say, zhi ji zhi bi, bai zhan bu dai, right? That means okay, you, have to, yeah. you have to know yourself first. Yes. We don't teach kids to learn about our own body, how your body, how your five senses connecting with the, your parents, connecting with the society, con connecting with the nature. And if our children grew up in the more nature environment, they will learn from the nature, they will learn from the animals yes. running in the Himalaya mountains. When I go to the villages, the children are singing They're everything. Free. Their spirit is Yeah, their spirit is free. And the yeah. songs, the folk songs yeah. is ta talking about the, the holy mountains, right. the rainbow after the... Um, it's quite simple. You can parallel to the Hawaiian yeah. culture, right? Absolutely. Yes. And that's why you said it's a perfect place to rear children, because you feel yeah. that energy and exactly. spiritual. Yeah, and Christiane has become a surfer girl. Oh, right? good. She's, She's in she tune with the ocean and the earth. And yeah, and I think for the most part that really defines who she is today. You but know, what she, distinguishes as a mom bringing up, as a single mom bringing right. up a child, what is that, how does that differ from conventional two-parent household to a daughter, for example? I mean, would you do something different if it was a boy that you had? I would not. She was born in New York, my daughter, and and then I did not want to raise her up in states at okay. all. Okay, let's hold on to that thought because now we're bringing in like the American culture and the influence and the difference with Asian culture right. and how we as parents are controlling the path that they're taking but yet allowing them to, to thrive in it. So don't go away. We have lots of philosophical, very important parenting issues to talk about here. So we'll see you soon. Aloha, my name is Joe Kent and I'm the Vice President of Research at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. The Grassroot Institute is a public policy think tank and we try to build a better economy in Hawaii and you can see us on the TV show E Hana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcasting Network every Monday at 2 o'clock. We'll see you there and let's build a better Hawaii together. Aloha. Thank you for watching Think Tech. I'm Grace Chang, the new host for Global Connections. You can find me here live every Thursday at 1 p.m where we'll be talking to people around the islands or visiting the islands who are connected in various aspects of global affairs. So please tune in and aloha and thanks for watching.
Hello, 欢迎回来。我们 Quark Talk. Okay, if you didn't understand that, I'm talking to two beautifully philosophical and open-minded、uh, mothers, Chinese mothers here,、uh, talking about parenting as a single mom, as a Chinese mom, as a non-conventional mom who chooses a path to rear their children in a very specific, free way. So let's talk about that back again with Catherine and Kun Kun.、Um, before the break, we mentioned how you know your decisions to move to the States is actually a very purposeful. Decision for、mm -hmm. your daughters,、um, and what difference that would make if they had grown up in Asia. So, any following up on that one, and、yeah. why? I think for me, I mean, you and I both went through that Asian type of education. You、yeah. longer than me, but I, is it different though, Taiwan and Chinese education? What would you say distinguishes the difference? I think it's pretty much the same. It's all very tian ya. <laughs> <laughs>、yeah. um, you just you, memorize yes, everything.、Yeah. I remember as a child growing up, especially in high school, <laughs> I was in school from seven thirty in the morning until five in the afternoon. And we all have to go to after school school. Yeah, to, from seven、yeah, o'clock、right. to ten o'clock at night. Right. So exactly, <laughs> exactly. So to me, when I made the decision to come to the U.S. for my higher education, I also made up my mind that one day when I have children, my children are going to receive education in the U.S. Because、wow. I do believe that in the U.S., that's where creativity, that's where innovation. Come from. But a lot of mainland. I mean,、mm -hmm. when I say mainland, I mean China mainland.、Right. Uh, a lot of them were trying because they have these resources to send their kids to the states to study.、Mm -hmm. I mean, they're coming, they're flooding in, but they don't have any、um, intention to stay. Right. They want to come for the education and bring it back. So, do you think that's different from what you're talking about in rearing your daughter here? Because、um, you you moving here, you're in the process of moving here with your daughter, right? Yes.、Um, my understanding of education truly is because when she came into my life. And I suddenly realized, being a mom, having a a live person now, you are fully responsible for her past. But being a Buddhist, I thought, what is more important for this child to grow up? I think, to me, I told her when she was three months old. I was talking to her. I said, nothing is more important. If I could assist you to plant the Bodhi seed in your heart when you as young as possible, to Grow up in a pure environment to understand the true value as a human and your relationship as a human to the universe, to the society, to other beings. And so I thought I would take her to travel to、yes. all the places, has、yeah. all the culture, all the holistic environment, has all these loving, kind people who would. You know,、right. just on the street, we smile at her and talk to her. So、We're, the environment is very important in influencing、so. a child. I think so.、Absolutely. And as a parent, as a mom, I think in the Asian time, the female in the society plays a very important role. In Bhutan nowadays,、mm. when they build house, they would only use women to hunk the mud wall because it's very sacred. They think women are the foundation of a home. And the man would put the roof on. So、huh. when they hung, what、well, they chant, they、yes. sing happily. Everything in the Himalaya mountains happened in the rhythm, in the vibration, that where I think is the pulse of the earth. Wow, the pulse of the earth. Listen to that. I mean, that takes a lot to digest. That's a very, very big statement, and it's a beautiful, beautiful concept.、Um, I want to go back to the concept, the the fact that you both single moms. If you don't、mm -hmm. mind sharing.、Um, How you got to that position, or maybe not, <laughs> or how that, or or the pressures you have from family or from Chinese society of、mm -hmm. that. Is there a stigma?、Um, do you find difficulties that you wish were otherwise? Share that. You know, to me, I believe what's meant to be, whatever is meant to be, is meant to be. So the path that I've been on since my daughter was two and a half years old, oh wow, so even single for single that motherhood. I have no no regrets. You never came close、that. to remarrying or wanting to.、Uh, I was engaged once. Okay. But again, that wasn't meant to be. Right. Yeah, but you know, to me, the reason why I took my daughter traveling extensively with me, two reasons. One is for practical reason. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Because as a career woman,、yeah. my media work and my mergers and acquisition work takes me to. Many different parts、sure. of the world. I have an office in New York. I travel to Beijing and Shanghai quite often. I now started an office in in Panama right, in Latin、wow. America. So, if I were to spend enough time with my daughter, 
I have to bring her with me. Absolutely. Right? So that's out of necessity. But the second reason is what we were just talking about. You know, I'm a firm believer of learning while traveling. Travel. I want her to grow up mm. to be an open-minded person. But going back to being a single woman, yeah. raising a child in American society, uh, I have to say there are challenges. Of course there are. I mean, just like every other parent, we all go through our challenges. However, I do, ha I do find, a, you know, some perks being a single <laughs> mom. Okay, so what are the benefits? Let's hear it. What are the perks? I always I share like that. I always share with my girlfriends that, you know, being a single mom, that means I can go um, wherever yeah, I want to, whenever, you, whenever yeah. I want to go, right? Yes. I don't have to check in with anybody. And Do you have to check in with your daughter? Uh, she's the only person that I have to check in with. Do you respect so. her concepts of when she doesn't approve of your partners or anything like that? You know, I... I take that into consideration quite a lot because I do believe in harmony. Right. And, you uh, both are so family. Buddhist. You're so, there's something deep that you, it comes back to something, it's not to do with being Chinese, but there's something deeper, I feel. Spirituality. It's a spirituality. Mm -hmm. What is your concept of being a single mom? Kung -Kung? Yeah, as you know, I lost my parents right. when they were very young. Right. And so I was alone. And Who brought you up then? And I just, you know, I, that was uh, my, my mom died. I were I already started work and oh, jobs, see, okay. and I was supporting her, and okay. said goodbye to her. And then I was like a kite cutting the thread off. Oh. When when that moment happened, I felt the I was so far away, like I was moving away from the earth physically. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of sense. And then, of course, I was very devoted to my practice as well. So I thought, okay, maybe. This is how life arranged me just to Again, get on the, the journey of enlightenment. And then I realized it's not that easy <laughs> just to go alone. And then I asked myself, is this only one thing I have not done on the earth is to be a mom. So I just decided to be a mom. Then well, meaning, how did you do that? Yeah, she just. Uh, I just went to the uh, uh, sperm bank. How do you say it, it? In the states or in yeah. China? Did they have it in, in China? New York? No, right? Yeah, in, New York. in New York. In New York. Yes. Did you have no desire to have a partner in life? Not at that stage. Yeah, I had a marriage, but um, that was a beautiful short marriage, and and you check that box off. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that in life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, before I made my decision to become mom, uh -huh. I went to Tibet and just want to become a nun. And my teacher didn't take me. Why? And he said, uh, think about why Buddha became uh, a Buddhist. He was thinking of all the sufferers of all beings. And even you come in the monastery now, will not sol solve your problem you have in your mind. Huh. You should go out back to the world, figure out everything. Wow. And so I said to myself, Lynn, all right, that's one more thing, I think, one more course. And truly, when my daughter came in my life, I realized, and that is, that, that is how it works. She came to teach me the ultimate course of a class before I took that is amazing. <laughs> that is like just, I'm getting like chill. I've got like, it's, this is, uh, okay, so it's interesting. So we learn from our children. Let's talk yeah. a little bit about that. How, yes. what we learn and how they force us to learn. I think through so many different ways. I was just, funny, we were just talking about that yesterday because to me, you know, my daughter, since she was a little baby, I have to say she was amazingly great. <laughs> You're so lucky. She, you know, <laughs> problematic very things lucky. like most and moms do. My mom always told me, she looked at my daughter and we're always traveling since she was a little baby. She said, you know, gosh, I've never seen another baby that's as portable as your child. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, can, you can look at her when she's three and say, hey, we're going to New York tomorrow. She packs her back and you guys are on that's the airplane so six hours later. Yeah. You know, but, but I think my challenge actually came in a different form. Uh, my daughter, unfortunately, starting two years ago, started developing some pretty serious medical issues. Right. So she started with scoliosis mm. um, that was getting worse literally every month. Mm. So we started to travel to Los Angeles to see doctors at Cedar sinai and mm. LA Children's Hospital pretty much every four to So you six had to weeks. readjust your kind oh, of priorities. Absolutely. I actually took almost a year off mm. from traveling just to be with her. Mm -hmm. Because to me, that's important, yeah. you know. And other than scoliosis, she recently got diagnosed with some autoimmune system oh, no. disorder. Oh, 
So that has been a really big challenge because now I'm put in a position that not only have to be a single mom, yeah. playing the role of being both mom and yeah, dad, right. I have to also be there as a counselor as well. Right. Because this is not an easy role for her. However, I have to say, she has been amazingly positive. If you just look at her, you wouldn't be able to tell she's been through so many medical issues. So how and do you think, do you, how do you think you've learned from this process? Do you feel like, why have I given this on my plate? Right. You know, I'm already working hard and doing what I can, but I get right. more on my plate. You can't do the blame game. Some people do. Do you think we're destined to have what we have and it changes us for the positive in, if you can figure out how to do that? Absolutely. I am a much better person uh -huh. today compared to two years ago before she okay. was diagnosed. Right. I am much more patient, I'm calmer, and I do feel I'm stronger than That's two wonderful. years ago. What about you, Gwen Gwen? What are some big challenges for you coming forward? Because how old is she now? Five and a half. Right. So you've got a lot of phases yeah. to go through. <laughs> As she said, we were just chatting. I said, my daughter is opposite energy. She comes to challenge me every day. I believe so. <laughs> I love her. She and, is a little and, spark. Of yes. <laughs> and she, but I learned. I become younger through her eyes, re-looking at the world. When we travel, she would uh, say things that is so beautiful and so fairy tale, and actually make me think, I used to be like this. Why can't I look at the world in her eyes, through her eyes again? You know, there's a beautiful film in China, in fact, about uh, the view through the eyes of a five-year-old boy um, based on a true story. So Yeah, really so that's how first thing I, I've learned to look at the world in a different angle through her eyes. Great. Second, um, they are, I think the kids nowadays came to the earth are stronger souls and much far more smarter than us. A good example. And, you know, I, as a Buddhist, I train myself every day to observe my senses, my emotions, my conscious. I should always be aware of what's going on. So sometimes, as a mom especially, when I try to help her to build a healthy living habit, for example, fold your own clothes mm. while she's five and a half, right. and she would sometimes doesn't want to do it. And there was one time I was really getting a little bit at the edge of yeah. my nerve, and she, I, I raised my voice. She said, I use step, my stepmother. <laughs> oh, wow. So that's interesting, the fairy tale. Sorry we have no more time, but I, what, I'm, what I'm getting from both of you is the spirituality, the deepness, and to learn from your children, to see life through the eyes of your children. It is so important. And you both are so different, but so similar. And the spirituality and the energy is just amazing. Thank you so much Thank for you sharing for having so us. much. And Thank I hope you. you learned a little bit too. And again, just enjoy your children and enjoy everything. Thank you for tuning in.